The highest spot on Earth is not Mount Everest, your book says. It's something else. What is it? Uh, first, it's true, not because my book says it, but simply because it's true. <laughs> okay, let's want to clarify that. <laughs> All right. Uh, no, I mean, Earth, to the astrophysicist, we don't really care much about sea level. No. If you want to be high, you're measuring your distance from the center of the Earth. From the very center of the Earth. Is that different from the center? <laughs> I, I'm trying okay, to give it. Okay, the I'm very center of emphasis. the Earth. Um, I don't know how many centers you know of. <laughs> okay, the very center of the Earth. The really very, very center yes. of the Earth. Uh, so you want to find the farthest point from that center. And it turns out sea level at the equator is farther away from the center of the Earth than sea level near the poles. It has nothing to do with global warming and melting of the ice caps. Why is that? Because Earth, we know it spins. Once a day, yes, thank you. Three people know the, how long a day last year. Good for row number two. They're <laughs> off to a great start. <laughs> so, uh, so, so you spin, you know, when you spin pizza dough, it kind of flattens out. Yeah. It gets wider in the middle. And, so Earth, throughout its life, even when it formed, it was spinning. And it got a little wider at the equator than it does at the poles. So it's not actually a sphere. It's, an, it's oblate, and officially it's an oblate spheroid. That's what we call it. But not only that, it's slightly wider below the equator than above the equator. A little chubbier. A little chubbier. Yeah. Chubby is a good way. It's like pear-shaped. All right, so it's <laughs> yeah, I, honestly, I can't take you know five seconds of watching this this guy uh, kneel on the grass for Mike Tyson. I mean, literally, this guy is the worst actor on the on the planet. Period. But yet he's so bad that for the Nastards or for the you know. The ones that are just so hopeful that there's such a thing as outer space and and other planets and space travel and the possibility of one day, you know, building a home on Mars. Uh, they're, they're so desperate for that to be true that they literally just eat every piece of crap this guy puts on the table. He, he's a joke, period, dot, period. Okay, so so enough of uh, that guy. He, he's a joke. If you haven't figured that out, I, I can't help you. Um, I was talking to somebody, a ball earther, quite some time ago, and actually a Christian, who, who swears that we're on a spinning wet ball. So I, I asked him about the flight issue, about, you know, if the earth is spinning, as, as our friend Mr. Neil on the Grass for Mike Tyson here, says the earth is spinning at about the rotation of a day, a thousand miles an hour. If a plane leaves New York City and flies to London, England, and a plane at the exact same time leaves London, England and flies to New York City. If one is flying into the spin and the other is flying away from the spin, how is it possible that they would land at the same time? How are their flights the exact same time? Because that's what it is. They're the same time. Uh, if you were flying into a spin, which was spinning at approximately 1,000 miles an hour, you <laughs> and you were flying with it, with the spin, 
you could pretty much hover above your location and the spin would take you to your destination i mean you know you'd obviously have to do some steering and some some some, some modifications but but you wouldn't have to to use much gas <laughs> much much jet fuel um it, but but if it was the opposite if you were flying um it, away from the spin pushing against it oh my gosh it would take you forever to get to your destination it would almost be literally you'd be better off to turn around and go the other way um you would probably you know if you caught that spin right you would probably be able to go around the world in a day in a day you could literally fly by hovering into the spin according to mr kneel on the grass for mike tyson you you could literally hover and be anywhere you want as long as you were riding the spin and not use even an ounce of jet fuel now you know people deny that, that the earth is spinning although this is what this guy says he says the earth is spinning and has been for many 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 years he never once says that it's the 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 action the atmosphere is spinning and the earth is 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 like in the bubble and 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 so it's like you know the atmosphere is around it and and, and it's the atmosphere is spinning and we're just inside it and uh, if if the earth was not spinning and it was actually the atmosphere spinning then there would be no effect on the shape of the earth over all of these many many years of it spinning there would be no effect Neil on the grass from Mike Tyson here says that there's an effect on the shape of the earth because of the fact that the earth has been spinning for all of these years and it has gotten wider at the equator chubbier that, that's what he says and, and he's written a book and it's and it's not true because he's written a book It's true because it's true so so give it up give it up I'm not saying that you have to right now this second have a light go on that you automatically become a flat earther but, but i'll tell you what you do have to do you have to start questioning these types of people their stories don't match up for your own observation for your own reality when you step out into this world and you observe what you're standing on and look up and observe what you're looking at it does not match up to a single thing this guy says use your own skills use your own observation it's not going to take a whole lot of effort, but I promise you, if you start to really think about it, you're going to realize you're being played. Now, we can talk about why you're being played in another video, but you first of all have to realize you're being played before we even start answering those questions. If you can't get the first part of this, if you can't get that this guy is a BS artist, he's an actor, a liar, a deceiver, and that NASA in Hebrew stands for deceiver. If you don't, if you can't figure this out, if you can't get past the first part, don't even ask the questions at the end of the book. Don't don't ask me why. Let, let us first of all make sure you understand that you're being played. Then we can talk about how. And then we can talk about why. But don't go to why before you figure out the fact you're being played. Because then what you're doing is you're mocking. You don't actually want to know. You're just mocking. So so understand something. Neil on the grass from Mike Tyson here is an actor. He's a liar. He's a player. He's manipulating people. He's playing a role. And you guys just haven't figured that out yet. Start figuring it out. It really isn't that hard to do. God bless.